drop, drop it on the random. Coming up on this week's episode of Hip Hop Now Podcast, Tommy Boy, De La Soul, and streaming services. Let's talk about this. Let's get ready. 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 Read these headlines. This album must be gone. This, this album must be gone. 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 This album must be What up, y'all? I am your host, Vegas, and this is Hip Hop Now Podcast Extra. A podcast designed to catch you up on all things hip-hop, music, and culture that happened throughout the week. Returning listeners, what up, man? How you doing? How your mama? How, how all of the How your fam? The whole thing, right? Uh, new listeners, welcome. Please know that this podcast is available on everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything, audio-wise. We're talking iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Podbean. SoundCloud.com slash Hip Hop Now Podcast and more. So all you got to do is search for Hip Hop Now Podcast. And please know, it's very important that you hit that subscribe button if you like what you hear. Because therefore, you are locked in. You will always, even if you don't listen to the episodes every week on time. Whenever you feel like, man, I haven't listened in a while. Or I missed last week. Let me catch up. You really don't have to visit. If you have one of these apps or whatever on your phone or on your computer or whatever the case may be, subscribing just makes it so that all of them are there waiting for you. So subscribe today. Hit that like button. And more importantly, share this with people you know enjoy this kind of content. Now, if you don't know, when I do these extra podcast that means we are going to focus in on one topic at hand and this week we had something that og listeners to this podcast kind of know because i've touched on but we're going to touch on it for real today pause um or you know if you're talking about a lady or whatever who cares uh but nevertheless right so i used to do in recent years i used to do this podcast called state of the streaming services it was sort of a hip-hop version of state of the union you know and basically what i would focus on is the state of the streaming services from a end user standpoint meaning that i was really only talking about the benefits of the streaming service to the user you know which one is the best one which one is coming up and it usually kind of centered around Spotify, Apple Music, and Tidal. Because those are just kind of like the three pillars when it comes to streaming services as far as how big they are, as far as how popular they are. Um, With Spotify probably being the top because it started it for the most part and have the biggest uh, user base and has um, basically the bigger catalog even without having certain artists on there. And then Apple Music was third mainly because, I mean, yeah, it was second, I mean to say, mainly because of the user uh, install base being big, mainly because of people having iPhones, right? A lot of people have iPhones and iPads, stuff like that. So you were all automatically counted, especially when it was free a couple of times as being locked in so you know why not have apple music if you know you have a phone and it's right there in your face um and then title was different because title was a streaming service originally that um were really the first before they were title um the title we know um that offered you know higher quality streaming and their catalog wasn't big but they got a lot of exposure once jay-z got behind it and a couple of other artists and it became like the the platform for artists you know what i'm saying where you wouldn't get jerked and that was kind of a hint at what streaming services means for artists as opposed to users so we had all these thoughts of you know well which one is better you know who has what and blah 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 and for me personally just to give my personal take um spotify was my platform of choice because of how many uh, 
songs were available and albums and catalogs were available. And for a music lover like myself, that's more important than exclusives. Apple Music really wasn't my cup of tea because it just, I don't know, it just didn't do anything for me. Title was, if Spotify didn't exist, Title would be what I would use, mainly because I just like the layout, I like the idea of higher quality music, but they don't have as much. And, you know, telling me something like, oh, well, you can't get Jay-Z's albums on, on the mother services, uh, <laughs> it does not matter. I'm a Jay-Z fan for real. I have all of his albums. So at any point, I want to return to some of those classics. I have them. I don't need a streaming service for that. Um, But nevertheless, that was and is the state of streaming services from a user standpoint. Now we step over to an artist standpoint, which I've covered in the past, but mainly because of the title situation. And that was years ago now. I mean, Prince was still alive when I covered that. So here is the situation with Tommy Boy Records and De La Soul and De La Soul's digital catalog. Now, here's the brief reason, right? So essentially, De La Soul's catalog, I believe their first six albums. Yeah, the group's first six albums, beginning with their debut, um, Three Feet High and Rising, um, which uh, actually I believe 30 year anniversary yeah this this year in 2019 um they celebrated 30 year anniversary the album was originally dropped in 1989 but starting with that debut album and the next six albums which for a lot of especially early de la soul fans is like the crux of their career you know what i'm saying like you have basically to some people their best albums, Three Feet High and Rising, De La Soul is Dead, Balloon Mind State, um, Stakes is High, you know what I'm saying? Like, especially those those uh, four, uh, I think that was four, <laughs> are, are big. And a lot of fans probably, once they had, you know, had Tidal and all these different streaming services, was like, yo, where are their albums? Like, <laughs> where are the classic albums? I believe... What exists online was like one or two independent joints that uh, De La Soul released. I believe especially their last album. Um, And what else? Their last album. Oh, and I believe there's a greatest hits that's available um, for streaming. I'm, I'm almost positive. But a greatest hits is not the same thing as listening to The Stakes is High on a streaming surface service in its full entirety, right? I mean, in its entirety, right? It's not just not the same, you know, greatest hits is cool to bring all those hits together. But, you know, what if you just love the album? You know, do you want a greatest hits of a tropical quest there? Or do you want to go see the low and theory? So the big, the big deal, the big boycott is because of the fact that Tommy boy wants to claim basically 90% of of the proceeds that come from streaming these six albums, right? Now, we know you signed a record deal and, you know, it's it's shady business and they signed a record deal in the 80s. But the one wrinkle there is that that did not, uh, you couldn't negotiate streaming, right? Because nobody knew streaming was going to happen. You know, around that time, we knew that vinyl was going to happen. So you're negotiating for vinyl in the 80s. Uh, What else? Cassettes and CDs. Those were the three technologies that you can negotiate with your record deal at that point in time. With CDs kind of not taking off but still being around. So there was no way for them to, to negotiate a deal for streaming services. And we all know that. A lot of record labels, along with these streaming platforms, have dictated what artists get with Tidal being the more artist friendly platform. Right. So there's the wrinkle there. I know some people like, man, I'm going to Tidal, but let me (laughs) let me finish. Um, So that's kind of been uh, the case. And, you know, with with De La Soul would get 10 percent of the proceeds and within that 10 percent, like it's just not it's not just that because you think oh well they get 90 and they get 10 percent. that's why that's 10 percent, i believe being split amongst the group 
also it has to uh, be used to pay for any other uh, costs that come with that, right? As far as with with De La Soul, you know, as as far as management and stuff like that. So, and I, you know, I don't have the details in front of me um, as far as that breakdown. But imagine that. Imagine as a group, you're only getting ten percent, right? And then you have to use that ten percent to pay others and then you get your cut so you see why the deal is terrible because it's not even giving them enough to pay their fees in this situation right so what happened de la so expressed this you know as as tommy boy was like hey yo march 1st de la so's digital catalog is here Longtime fans rejoice de la so was like but yo they yo, they trying to, you know, give us 10 percent and we got to do all of this and this, that and the third. And here's a quote um, from Maceo on hip hop DX dot com. Shout out to hip hop DX dot com. You can check out this article they have here. But here's Maceo uh, talking about it. And I quote, let me tell you what's crazy. We flirted with the idea of a boycott for a long time for about a good month and a half. It's crazy. Quest Love came out of the blue with that. We honestly wanted to be really clear of it being a boycott. It just sat there on our tongue. We were like, what the F do we do? We legally can't fight and can't afford to fight. We ended up refraining from that. Um, Tom Silverman can legally do this. It's pretty much turned into a protest to us and a boycott for fans the boycott manifested on its own it had been up to this point just a protest now as a result of this playing on our line and you obviously you have fans supporting but you had a number of uh hip-hop artists who also who also played a role um in in boycotting or basically making his boycott a bigger thing uh than it was originally that includes nas that includes uh jay-z uh Jerobi, and a number of other um even lord finesse if you go to lord finesse's instagram he kind of broke down the deal for for fans also to let them know and not just the deal but the history of artists and and streaming services and and not really getting paid and not having control over their catalog um to basically, you know, dictate what happens. This is what Nas said on uh, Instagram. De La Soul is the foundation for the young or old, hip-hop lovers or not. It's universal respect for these brothers, my friends. Word to the jizza. Ain't, Tommy ain't my mother effing boy. When you don't respect the foundation, you're doomed for bad karma. Look out for new moves made by De La Soul. Right? Jay-Z took it a little further and this is what uh de la soul posted in regards to jay-z's move their fans just this is de la soul their fans just got off the phone with title in support of the artist title has decided not to stream our catalog until this matter has been resolved thank you title thank you jay now if that doesn't get your hip-hop juices flowing as far as the love and the support going around and the 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 number one thing is not just that is you you gotta thank social media for having the platform to do that right and you also got it to spread that word amongst fans and business people alike including other legendary hip-hop artists that have pull because jay has made it so that at least one of the streaming services won't make it available that's dope, right? But you also got to look at the fact that hip hop is even in this position to help make these kind of moves because that was not the case years ago. Like, you know, you didn't have hip hop artists who could just basically say, okay, one of the biggest streaming platforms is not going to do this, right? So as a result of all of this going down, you're thinking it has to be like, well, what is Tommy Boy Records? going to do and this is the thing too for me i didn't even know tommy boy records was still around <laughs> like who is on that label 
Like, if you ask me, it's like, okay, right? De La Soul, Naughty by Nature. I, I don't know. Um, but as a result of all of this bad karma, as Nas would put it, and backlash from fans and just trending on social media, you know, there's been the hashtag, you know, Tommy, my mother effing boy or whatever. Shout out to the Jizza, That's his line. Uh, who also used to be on Tommy Boy Records. But this was a quote from Tommy Boy Records as a result of all of this. Because Tommy Boy has not had the opportunity to sit down together with De La Soul and finalize our negotiations, something we've wanted to do for months, we have decided to postpone the digital release of their catalog scheduled for tomorrow. Tomorrow being March 1st. Uh, If if you're from the future, get your ass out of here. Uh, Also, Tommy Boy added, we know fans are eager to hear these amazing recordings and we are hopeful for a quick resolution. Now, what this situation says to me is sure there was a negotiation that they have wanted to do for months with De La Soul. But to me, it says that it wasn't beneficial to De La Soul. They wasn't offering anything better. But now. What this boycott and this bad attention has done is it's put eyes and ears on the situation. Now you have eyes and ears on a negotiation that you didn't have before. So they could throw the dirt, you know, contract on the table and say, yeah, okay, you get this garbage. Right. Um, And honestly, they didn't really have the foresight to say that, yo, if this gets out, it could be bad. So can we put a little hush on this joint? And what I, I think I did read something about De La Soul saying they wanted to negotiate, but they kind of wanted them to sign something f- first. You know, not not necessarily negotiate the deal, but do something in advance of doing that that would basically quiet the situation, which De La Soul was like, nah. You know, because then you can give us any deal you want. So it's all about leverage and all of that. And also one key thing that I forgot to point out is that Tommy Boy and De La Soul have gone through it for over 30 years because of sampling situations. Um, And that's what's kind of uh, basically put the brakes on their music being out there. And that catalog from de la soul went from being owned by tommy boy to being owned by warner brothers to uh back to tommy boy records and it's it's a situation that has to be draining for a legendary hip-hop group like de la soul you're talking about 30 years of having situations where maybe you're not making as much money as you should as a group because of the deal you signed and now here you have uh well you have situations where you know um you know some of your music is tied up in in legal issues because of samples and what can you and can't you perform or sell at your shows um you know it, it just becomes a sticky mess and the fact that it's still not resolved after 30 years and it feels like Tommy Boy was trying to find a way to recoup or either pay for it via putting this stuff on streaming services you know what i'm saying and and kind of cutting de la soul the at the lowest point like you know as as low as they can give them like they probably rather give them nothing but the most they could give them was 10 percent. it's just all bad all bad all around and it says a lot about streaming services and as a user where we begin as a user, as a hip hop fan, and I want you to leave your comments in the comment section or hit me up on Twitter or Instagram at Vegas World INC. Let me know how you how do you feel as a consumer? You know, do like do you stream any of these services? Do you pay for any of these services? Um, even if you don't pay, do you use any of them for free? And how does that make you feel about your purchase? Now, I gave you how I felt and what I felt about why I chose certain um, platforms. But I got to say, this situation, even though I've known about this for artists, 
makes me feel some kind of way as a hip hop fan. Makes me feel like, well, maybe I should move over to title, right? Because at the end of the day, I'm definitely not for artists getting, you know, for lack of a better term, raped because the streaming thing got big and they basically cut the artists out of it. Um, but when you look at something like Title, it's more artist friendly. But there's a conflict there, right? Because one, not all artists can can pull their music uh, or, or have their music not be on there. Like, for example, somebody like Nas. Nas catalog is available on all streaming services. And he does not control his situation the way Jay-Z does as far as masters go, where he could say, move all of my stuff to title. You want to hear Nas whole catalog? You got to go to title, right? That can't be said for a Tribe Called Quest or or Bad Boy or, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of, a lot of hip hop is still available on Spotify, on Apple Music. And I think I feel at this point, and look, some of that stuff can't be controlled by the artist. So it's not like, oh yeah, well, Lord Finesse is talking about it's not great, but here is his music sitting on Spotify anyway. It ain't exclusive to title. But that's not his fault because at the end of the day, they just don't have the control. So this fight is much bigger than just De La Soul and Tommy Boy Records. Um, As a consumer, I have a decision to make, right? Do I want to put my money into title, which I know at least benefits the artist in some way? Or or do I want to stay where I'm at? I think it depends on how this Tommy Boy situation plays out with De La Soul. Uh, because at the end of the day, there are still deals where some artists are, are getting more out of their deal with the streaming service. So they don't care if it's on Spotify and Apple Music. Right. But what it does is it champions title. And for those who don't want to, you know, know the details, but that's what this podcast is here. Um, it makes title look like like it was intended. The streaming service that champions artists. So you feel good about coming over there. But not everything over there is, you know, negotiated by artists. So keep in mind, there's still situations where, yeah, this music is made available on title but it's coming from the record companies not necessarily the artists so let me know what you guys think do do you agree with this whole boycott um do you feel like there's going to be any resolution or satisfying resolution um or middle ground at least where de la soul can feel happy about it and we can go back to loving the streaming services we love because we know it's all complicated Leave your uh, comments in the comment section below because this was a very interesting. This was this needed a podcast within itself. I'm telling y'all. That's going to do it for me for this week. You can follow me on social media, that being Instagram and Twitter at Vegas World INC. And if you still on Facebook, whatever, I'm not judging. Uh, you can go to Hip Hop Right Now. It's a page dedicated to this podcast that also uh, have things like the other podcast, That Time in Hip Hop, as well as stories like this and news clippings and videos and all of that. So on Facebook, it's Hip Hop Right Now. Until next week, y'all, I am not a critic. I'm a fan. For real. Peace. Dropping on the random.